And this is Building Downtown. You can follow us on social media at The Building DT. You can follow and subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm your host, Jason Kelly. You can follow me at J. Kelly MMA. Follow my co-host, Kirk Kasatsky at Kirk Apps. My other co-host, Amy Bart at Ames Bell. We're at show 100. And what yeah. way to celebrate 100 without Uno? Lush one, the man. How's man, it going, buddy? Come on, bro. We putting numbers on the motherfucking boat, baby. Yeah, it's on the, yeah. It's on, it's on the flow, and we leaving with it, bro. You better, you bet. I'm wearing red in honor of my boy Krill's album. You feel me? You see what nice, the fuck nice. is good? <laughs> red October. Everybody, go check that out. And new video just dropped a few days ago. Krill featuring Times GHG working a lot. Check that shit out. Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah come on, man. We're working on promoting it right now. I was actually, uh, I've talked to you in Messenger real quick. Um, I'm gonna take a minute of the show. I was gonna do, <laughs> I was gonna do our song next. You know what I mean? So okay, yeah, I'm gonna get you them lyrics. Please, please, yes, yes. I'm either gonna make a, it's either gonna be a cartoon or it's gonna be a lyric video. We'll see, but I want the lyrics, please. A uh, cartoon would be wavy either way, though. You feel me? Man, we pushing the line like a running back. This is a <laughs> motherfucking hunted stack. You know the vibes. <laughs> so let's go. We're obviously going to get into all this KTS one stuff. It's been almost a fucking year since you've been on. Crazy how time flies. And hey, your bitch say I swing wood like a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I see this news today. Midnight Madness. What is this shit? You're looking to put a team in there. And furthermore, can you explain or elaborate on this? Because I have somewhat of an idea. So I don't want to mislead anyone. I even see Pat Stay saying on Twitter, he's been asked to be on five teams. He doesn't even know what the fuck's going on. So can you, so, you know, uh, the, the homie Sue surf, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We've been chopping it up. He's got his new platform, Midnight Madness, which is basically like breaking free of the politics and constraints of any league structure. It's bringing it back battle rap to its bare. Oh no. Oh shit. Knuckle essence. Um, you know, you got to know the, the secret handshake and the, and the knock and the, the yeah, password you're getting. <laughs> it's fight club style battles. You feel me like, and, uh, you know, King of the Dot supports it. Um, you know, all the, you know, different leagues supporting it, organic behind it. Um, I'm way behind it. I've been working with Surf since, like, the early stages of it. So I'm going to be uh, – we got, you know, my my team, Death Coast, putting together my eight my eight spitters and shit. It's about my ten. It's about to be crazy. So and who's – How does it work? Each round, each round person gets knocked out or – No, nah, it's – so if, if you win the battle and there's five judges that are agreed upon by both parties and uh, a lot of celebrity judges, like known rappers, ball players, shit like that. So it's like there's no battle rap politics involved in it. You basically it's it's essentially like um, if you have bars, you might not even know who you're battling beforehand type shit. You just got to go oh, there no and whoever wins, like your team gets a point. Yeah. And no fan vote. Ain't no fan vote. Huh. Holy but shit, fans can it. support fans can support by betting, putting money up on the battles they want to see, and shit like that. Y'all need to partner up with DraftKings so people can bet on this shit. Huh. No, there's definitely uh we've been in talks with a bunch of different institutions to to break because the, the, the problem with gambling, once you do it on a larger scale, and if you like are aligning it to bigger brands, like a king of the dot type league or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's like legislation that comes into play and uh, legality. So we got to do it right. What about the team? What if I want to put up my own team? How do I get in? Huh? Well, you said you said there's uh, there's eight people per team, right? What if I want to put up my own team? How would I get in? Is that a possibility? So so, so uh, you won't be able to put up your own team. But if you know, like, let's say you know me, right? Yeah, yeah. And I verify you, even if there's not no. enough room on, on I'm, I'm my not team. saying me, me in particularly, right? But, but how does no, 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 no. I'm just using you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay, using you it. as an example. You, you fucking Kelly, whatever. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, yeah, yeah, whoever, yeah. like, y'all know me. And you're like, look, I really want to battle. Because you know somebody that's affiliated with it, um, I can put five Gs up and get you a battle. Or you can raise five Gs and get a battle. But what if he wanted to be like, I want to get together eight people and have my own team? Could he do that? So there's a so the first season there's a limit of ten teams, but that even if you're not on a team, that don't mean you can't battle. Oh, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So you got nice. That's a that's a, that's look. That's, it's it's that's, fucking that's more of a free agent idea, right? So can can a player bounce around teams? 
uh, there's certain rules that as far as the teams, like there are trades and shit like that. You feel me? Like, but like, look at the end of the day, this is real grassroots bare knuckle back room. You feel me? Like dice game battle rap type shit. So like, <laughs> nice, it's, nice. It's, 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 it's a, it, it, it's the wild west. You know what I mean? It's an open, it's open, unre uh, unregulated terrain at this point. Do you What's, know where it'll be streaming or? Yes, what that's what I was just going to ask. This is bringing it back to YouTube. Because the streaming oh. services, like shit, like uh, you know, Twitch, Caffeine, Twitch is great. Like King of the Dot, we love working with Twitch. You know, I know URL love working with Caffeine and all that shit. But it's been kind of whack for the battlers in the sense that, like, you know, I saw Pat Stay, for example, talking about like, like eighty percent of his fans can't find his new battles because yeah. they don't have streaming services like mm. that. So they're looking for a shit. They're like, Yo, I like your battles how come you haven't been active when in the past few years he's done some of the dopest shit of his career but if you don't if you're only on youtube you wouldn't know that shit like i was like like high key i was fucking uh in a different city i forget i think i was in like atl and i was a. Uh, and, you know, we're getting checked into the hotel room and I hear people talking in the hotel about battle rap. They don't know that I'm standing right there. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. I'm laying on in the cut. They don't see me standing there. These are just random fans in the wild talking about battle rap. <laughs> and, and I overheard them saying like, hey, there, there there's no there, there's, you know, battle rap. Like I, I like I fuck with King of the Dot because we've seen battles on YouTube, but I haven't been able to see certain leagues because there's no mm -hmm. fucking battles on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Because it is free. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is and then they free saw to me watch. a second later, and it was like, oh shit, it's whoopie won't. You know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah, it's free to watch. It's, it's free to and, watch, and but you can't, you can't a, play back, right? You can't right. play well, back unless you subscribe, right? You gotta, gotta subscribe and shit. Like, yeah. so, like, YouTube is dope because it requires a low psychic cost. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't, you don't have to fucking put much into just opening up your app and boom, the battle's right there. Click it or worst thing you got to do is write fucking pat stay verse and then a bill <laughs> hell of battles pop up right I mean, how, how how is this going to be happening is this happening in you a know, club you don't require oh i gotta go do this and then connect my card to this and blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> download from the app store people don't want to do all that bullshit it's right. not like our generation where we used to like go to the fucking go to the store every day to see a new tape that came out or a new you know the scribble jam <laughs> dvd just came out we got like it's not like that anymore people are lazy yeah for sure when when uh, YouTube changed uh, like monetization rules and regulations or whatever a few years back, they change all the time. But uh, there was once a time when you could make money off battle rap content on YouTube, correct? You still could make money off of it. It's not that you can't, but like, uh, so it's not that the monetization has changed. It's that the um, what like the the standards for like decency or whatever yeah so yeah like if you have like cuss words in your shit you're gonna they're gonna put you as like explicit content so like the censorship has like killed the amount like monetization is still on but you get you you get a fraction of what you used to get oh okay so it's okay. not like so like you know king of the dot a channel like king of the dot we get you know I'll just use grind time as a frame of reference because I yeah. used to, I've never like owned and operated the King of the Dot channel, but mm -hmm. I owned and operated the grind time channel. There's a time we're getting 10, 15 grand a month. That's what I was going to ask you. What kind of money? What now kind of that money, same yeah. catalog. So the, like, let's say a channel was getting 10 to 15 grand. Now it would be getting maybe, maybe if you're lucky, like a thousand a month. Oh, oh. what? So I then it goes gonna from being like five, seven. Jeez. No, 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 not well, even for that close. kind of content. That's not all of YouTube. For that, for that like, yeah, if you're fucking uh, Addison right. Ray or one of them bitches, right. like, you, <laughs> right. you, you make fucking, you know, 50 Dang. grand a month. But it's like, and, and, and there are certain videos that slip through the cracks, like certain, like, you know, like a Cassidy versus a Hitman Holla on RBE, certain things might still, that battle might have generated 30, 40, 50 grand on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, but mm. that's like, it's 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 a roll of the dice and it's very rare basically a company like getting 10 grand a month on youtube like let's say you get like 120 150 a year just off your youtube channel now like if you're throwing events that cost 100 grand that's not like a sole source of income but that's a sustainable model to keep your shit lit you know what i mean like yeah, nowadays if you get 
if you get a fucking 10 racks a year, like you can't even fucking pay parking tickets for that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so how did that change? That's when my you... white tea money. That's white tea when money. You, you me sucks, for a year, like. When that changed uh, with YouTube, how did that affect the landscape of battle rap and the business of battle rap? I just remember hearing a lot of talk about it at that time. Was it, did it affect you um, quite a bit? Well, what happened was that like made, that really made um, searching for things like pay-per-view and VOD revenue, putting paywalls up in front of content, like yeah. a necessity, you know what I mean? Like we were already doing it, but it made it like, it further incentivized that. And then like, obviously the, what it, the eventual call to action is, hey, we got to do something. We're going to streaming services. There, there would have never been Twitch deals or caffeine deals if it wasn't for that. Exactly. And so with a Twitch dealer, or a cafe dealer, or something like that, is that also based on views or is that a negotiated contract, like a certain amount of pay? I, I'm not privy to what the, the okay. caffeine deal was, but um, yeah, I, I would assume, yeah, like off top, it's like, you know, like this is a, because what they're, what, what they're looking to do is, you know, like a company like caffeine, from what I understand, I don't know this for sure, but what yeah. I understand is they have, they have some ownership in URL. So they're, it's in their oh. vested interest to increase the profile of this company. So if it ever goes public or sells in the future, um, they get, they profit off of that. But even if, even if they don't, don't have any ownership, um, even if they, uh, they don't have ownership, it's still fucking, uh, it's still, um, it's still, they get paid off of their ad revenue and sponsorship. So they want you to have as many eyeballs as possible. My bad, uh -huh. the fucking homie Mac Myron just texted me about getting uh -huh. on my motherfucking uh, M Midnight Madness team. We about to go crazy, bro. Definitely. Oh, shit. So, yeah. So is it uh, with Midnight Madness, is it also going to be regions like KOTD is, like the season KOTD is, or can you pick from any fucking where? I mean, like, like th that's not a... That's not a prerequisite, but like for me, like, you know, obviously I'm an LA dude, but I also function hella heavily with Detroit and I function hella heavily with Philly. So I'm gonna get sprinkled, you know, all the cities mm -hmm. I fuck with in the mix. You feel me? Besides just LA and the Bay Area, Oakland and shit. And I saw something about uh, disaster being on your team. Is that just uh, hype right now or is That's that an confirmed. actual thing? That's did, confirmed. Did, 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 you gotta right. understand something. That I don't think people realize like every single move I bust. Diz is involved. Every single move, Diz bust. I'm involved. Like that's my partner. Like pause. But we've been we, we came in the game together, and mm -hmm. we work closer together than ever. Like so. Like people have no idea. Diz is Diz is gonna be a millionaire by year's end. I'm gonna just tell you all that. So like, nice. well, good for him. He's been working at fucking not just battle rap, but other things for a long time. But uh, you yeah, know, it, it's just it's always surprising to hear someone come out like Diz because he's not like he once was in his career. You know what I mean? He's not looking for battles all the fucking time. Right, something's got to be exciting for him to get off the couch and come out and battle someone. So it's always exciting when, only he's, come, when he's come back. There's only coming outside if it's smoke, smoke. If, <laughs> like, you know what I mean, like you can't <laughs> breathe outside. Look, I'm gonna tell y'all like this. Y'all interviewed me a few times last year. It's one yeah. of my favorite. Just the conversations that we had. You yeah. feel me? Every, every time I came on was amazing and like I got so much shit going on but I'm making it a point to do this interview to let y'all know how much I appreciate it because because I'm the same person and like you feel me I'm walking with God everything I do is by the grace of God but like I'm in a different position like I've and as I attribute it all to God and my recovery hey. and sobriety because all this cool shit going on and there's mm -hmm. a bunch of shit I'm not even privy to talk about yet it's all which I will once once it's in the light like yeah but this is all a result of you know me bettering my life and walking with God. But like, I want to let y'all know how much I appreciate this platform and I'll always fuck with y'all. Uh, uh, love. Thanks, man. We love that, man. We yeah, love man. that. And like I said, this is, we wanted you here for episode 100. You know what I mean? And it's like, you gave us so much time at the start and then shouting us out. And we, I even know of people that reached out to you in the battle rap world that I've requested to come on as a guest, reach out to them. And they fucking straight up told me lush one cleared you i'll do the show you know what i mean so you, like we got a lot of love for you here too it goes right back to you man for sure man for sure 
Uh, I got a little question about the madness again. Uh, so is, has the list of the, what would you, what would you call them? Captains or coaches has been posted yet or because you said it's going to be 10 Friday, teams. Friday. And when's the first being event? announced on Friday at 1 PM? When's the first Tentatively, event? Uh, Janu January 28th is the first event. So how is this, um, is it going to, I mean, it'll overlap with other events or are you kind of all working together to not so, have that be a problem? No, that's kind of the idea. It's supposed to like, if let's say, uh, so King of the Dot, you know, like we got the finals, uh, March 20th, right? You right. feel me? Like, I'm not going to say what city it's in, but you know, wherever it's going to be at, right? Mm -hmm. In that city, the day before, we'll do a Midnight Madness event and everybody will come out there and then it's in conjunction with king of the dot you feel me like 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 not in That's conjunction but like man. So, yeah supported by king of the wow. dot type shit like if there's a big nice. rbe event in atl or some shit everyone show up in atl and the day before do an event there you feel me it's like it's going where the culture goes That's are you gonna is are there, there gonna be like a live component like can people show up if if there aren't a lot of restrictions with COVID, selling tickets and shit like that? Not or? really. It, it's going to be, like I said, you got to know this. Not really. You got to like, you got to like know the secret handshake. You got to, you feel me? Like, it's oh, so it wasn't a joke. Only, hey, like, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it, 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 it's high powered, high powered. You feel me? There's big, big money because, on the table. There's going to be like, um, shit. it's going to be, look, I can't speak on too much, but I'll tell you, uh, shouts to Sue, sir, for organizing the whole thing. Jack Boy Main and Bill Collector, you feel me? Obviously, Bill doing this while he's gunning for 100K on King of the mm -hmm. Dot. Like, it's, uh, it's, this is crazy, but is this really like, like, I'm officially a team captain, but I'm not like a curator. I'm helping, like, I'm helping organics out. Like, we're all like getting involved in different capacities to help. But you feel me? This is like, I'll never take away. This is all surf at the end of the day. Nice. Yeah, I see he's getting a lot of uh, positive support. I know him and Verb have been going back and forth and stuff, but I've seen Organic speak positively about it. A bunch of fans on social media and stuff. It seems like that. It, I'm really excited to find out more about it and see how it all unfolds. And it, uh, the battlers are behind it. People like you are behind it. And I think that's that's what he's going to need too to get off the ground, as opposed to people trying no, to prevent him or not getting involved or hold him back. No, 1000%. And, you know, like, just to put it out there, like, Verb is a, is a fucking god in this mm -hmm. culture. And uh, I love Verb, you know, as a person, as, a, um, as an entity. I've been working with Verb since 2009. He does great business. He's a brilliant mind. Uh, so I got nothing personally against Verb. And I'm down, you know, I'm trying to bust moves with Verb this year, 1000%. But uh, whatever him and Surf got going on, they're they going to work it out like men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, whatever it adds, that entails it adds uh you know adds more hype too if you know it leads up to them <laughs> having a battle it adds a lot more hype too and hopefully it doesn't turn anything to stupid because that's you know nobody wants to see that shit but i was gonna say no, at the end of the day however the they, they however they work that out they gonna work it out as men they both grown ass men yeah uh, so kotd season one uh, Fire. the playoffs finally fucking kicked off. First time that something like this has ever been done. We, we started back in what, like June or something. Uh, now that Shit, you yeah, it's like, <laughs> and you've been at all of them. That you is know what's it. crazy is because we, we were working on this, like since the grand prix it was mm -hmm. like not even done yet. We already started working on it. So it's like, it's been no rest since, uh, 2020. Like you feel me? like uh, stop august july of 2020 putting the grand prix together it's been like a year and a half straight gunning on this shit how do you feel how do you feel at this moment of time after all this work that so, you put yeah into and i've had the pleasure of being at every single one and uh sorry it's it's lagging a bit i was just gonna say the uh how do you feel after all this all this work that you've put in since 2020 you're saying two years non-stop do you feel like it's worth it do you feel like it's 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 it's, 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 it's been fruitful so far I mean, this is like, it, it, it's all on God at the end of the day. It's, it's manifesting how it's supposed to. Now, like, I got to be honest, like, I feel like I'm, it's worth it 100%. I'm with the business 100%. I love it. It's been an incredible experience. I'm very grateful for it. It deserves way more attention, way more fanfare, way more excitement, all of that. You feel me? That's what it deserves, like, mm -hmm. period. 
we had this conversation with City, sort of, and he was saying that he sees battle rappers making a million bucks per battle, battle at some point in the future soon because it's been booming so much and growing and getting more attention and getting a little more bigger stages, bigger paychecks. Yeah, I think that we will see a million dollar battle probably within the next year. Within the next year, you think? I think so. With nice. with two battlers or with an industry guy that crosses over? Well, look, if you cross over and you step into the ring, you a battler. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All- but you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, right? Like a guy who has a name built off mainstream rapping. It's like, do you think it'll take someone with a name like that? Or do you think it'll be two guys who we've been watching for, you know, 10 plus years? Finally, getting that. I, I, I think that um, I think that remains to be seen. I think most likely, like, if, like, let's say there was like a fucking, let's say there was like the game versus Lloyd Banks or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Why does that battle always come up on the show? Right. <laughs> That'd be crunchy. Hell yeah! I tune into that. I'd like to see Banks battle. I'd like to see game battle too. There's, so, there's quite a few industry guys. There's also some I would not want to see battle. But. Well, I, I don't know. Is there is there a Forbes list for battle rappers or some shit? <laughs> who's, the, who's, the, who's the highest paid per battle right now? Is that a known fact or no? Um, th- there's a few names in the conversation. Um, I know Hitman Holla, mm-hmm. Cassidy, Lux, Mook, mm-hmm. Surf, Disaster. Those are like, you so, know. And when we're speaking names like that, uh, let's say a ballpark. Can you... Can you, you do you have a ballpark? Well, six figures, right? I mean, they, yeah, they'll it, say that six figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like all those names I mentioned, including Diz, are flirting so with six that, figures. So that means a million dollar battle is not that far off then, because I was thinking, no. I was thinking 25, 30, maybe. But if you're talking, it's six not figures, it's like, not. Let, let, let me put it to you like this. In These 2000, put that 2014, really? <laughs> well, in, in 2014, I brokered a deal for Cassidy where he got. A quarter million for a battle. So Shit, that was 2014. Man. That's crazy. When he battled Diz. It's crazy to think too. Do you mind telling me what Diz got for that? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking D- the Diz, wrong Diz. person. <laughs> no, Diz unfortunately only got 50 grand. But unfortunately, you know. well, I mean, he got a fucking sick promo out of that and uh, 50 grand. <laughs> yeah. But I would never look, just to put it out there, I would never allow. You know, someone I work and I don't get to, I don't manage this. This mm-hmm. is not my artist. I think that 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 term sounds fucking hella suspect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it crazy too? If people around that industry fucking lame shit and talk about like, oh, say like my artist, but as, as my brother, I would never allow him to not get paid more again. Like he's gonna get if anything, he deserved two fifty. You feel me? But and not, not, been not the other way around. Now, now it's a different story, right? I think after that battle. Now it's, I think that battle changed a lot, is what I'm saying. I think that battle was needed. Absolutely, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. The way it turned out was kind of weird, but the fuck, I think it was needed and I think it did what it was supposed to do. Even if he got 50 grand back then, it was well worth it in the the way it played out. Mm -hmm. 1,000. Yeah, I remember uh, when we had Gully on, he was talking about what they paid cannabis and he said, fuck it, never again. Plus, look how that (laughs) turned out. Yo, Bishop was telling a story on his show with Direct the other day. Well, a few weeks ago now, I guess I guess cannabis wanted to battle Iron Solomon, but he wanted to live in a fucking in a cabin in northern Ontario. Some shit for like fucking a month. What's up with that? Yeah, I heard. Have you ever heard this story? (laughs) Cannabis is cannabis is the goat, bro. (laughs) <laughs> cannabis is the fucking goat, bro. That's Holy a legend right there. Yeah, man. And, and you know, cannabis, yeah, like there was a miscommunication with the, you know, because I brokered that battle as well. Mm-hmm. But originally, like it was, I, I outsourced it to somebody else who wound up booking it. Like, and uh, he wound up miss, uh, like, and, and like that's where I learned. So this is me, like, you know, I'm 30, 30 years old at the time, right? Mm-hmm. This is 10 years ago. 10 years ago, this battle got booked. Yeah. It's 30 years old. And I didn't, there's a lot of things about business I didn't understand yet. And with that, like I saw the, I didn't see the contract. I, I would never be involved in an endeavor where I'm not overseeing. I don't have my own lawyer. You feel me? Shouts to my boy, Jeffrey Klein in Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. my motherfucking lawyer. Eat the case. Beverly you feel Hills me? Like, so Beverly I, Hills lawyer. Come on, come on. Jeffrey Klein, <laughs> baby. That's my dog. So um, I, without having Jeffrey look at a contract, like um so that was my mistakes 
So that shit got booked. I thought like the, the understanding we had was cannabis was getting 10 grand for that. But by the end of it, you know, cause the contract was written by another one of my homies who wasn't my homie at the time, but shout out to my boy, uh, Matthew Markoff, M80, one of the most uh, top a and in hip hop. And um, you feel me? He uh, put it, basically Biz was supposed to get damn near 40 pop, like 38 racks, which at the time was like, Mm. You're talking 10 times bigger than fools are getting paid. Um, but that was a, that was a misunderstanding. And it, it's crazy. Cause now like for it's when, when I think about it, like 10 grand was a huge deal for, for us to do a booking back then. But now it's like, shit, like I could fucking scrounge up 10 grand from investors in a day easily. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and give me a few hours. I could get 10 grand for a battle. Like, but back then it was like, like you, that, that's like, Yo, like you better you better find some bitch whose grandparents left her some inheritance or had a had a, had a fruitful bat mitzvah or some shit. You feel me? Like, isn't that crazy to think though? Think like fucking how young you were, how inexperienced you were. Prosperous times, right? You're fucking you're fucking high out of your fucking mind on everything you can fucking find, and people are allowing you to play with quarter million dollar fucking right. deals and shit. That's fucking wild absolutely insane yeah the fact that people the facts that people let me do it now is crazy to me and i'm not fucking you feel me like <laughs> but 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 back then like yeah and like you know you have to to be in the position to do that like you know like a lot of people with mouthpiece like you know the art of uh you know, the art of speech mm. i don't want to say finesse because it's more than that the art of speech can get themselves in a position like that but to actually execute it and leave all parties prospering and feeling good about the situation that requires a lot more care and uh you know um empathy and um and determination and that's that's where i'm at right now as opposed to back then like at the time i was just kind of like yeah let's go (laughs) with uh i know you're helping with all kinds of things with ktd season one but like with is your main focus hosting absolutely not Um, no so okay i thought that they had like i knew like i said you're doing everything but I thought that uh, maybe that would alleviate some of the other things that goes into a, to an event that you help with, if you're just it, focusing on that. But. Yeah, like, so everything you've seen with S1, like, I've been, you know, it's like basically me, Organic, and Gully, and like a few other people, like, you mm-hmm. know, shouts to Charles, shouts to J-Pro, shouts to King Fly, shouts to Rigo, like, you know, like, I can name them by name, essentially, my boy. Yes. Yeah. Like, there's like, there's like, it's a very, very small insular team you know obviously ruin your day you know avocado clayton and all them but uh but really like i've you know um essentially been curating all this shit with like me and organic and gully like doing all this shit mm-hmm. have you been working with the ijc as well yeah and, uh, thank you and of course Copacetic aesthetic and the ijc every step of the way yeah you know i there's been calls i didn't agree with that i wanted to do something about but yeah. fucking get on a <laughs> <What> co- <was laughs> it? Co- <laughs> which one was it when lush <laughs> get on cope aesthetics helmet fucking like yo what the fuck but you know <laughs> he stood firm like to have me in organic if you, if you, if you, if you, to be like someone like cope aesthetic to be to be somebody like cope aesthetic and you have lush one and organic yelling at you like i don't yell but like organic <laughs> yells organic yeah. yelling at you me fucking like me just looking at you like this like <laughs> you know like <laughs> And, yeah, I, and uh <laughs> and still standing firm on your mor- your morals and you know not deviating from your moral compass and your ethics and standing firm like that takes a lot of fucking uh that take that takes being a real one bro you, you gotta be trill as fuck you gotta have nuts dipped in fucking bronze for that so shouts to <laughs> shouts to copacetic bro and shouts to the ijc salute to them i think krill the one you're thinking of was the rosenberg was it that one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the, 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 the face expressions you gave up. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, well, like that, you know, <laughs> not, not for nothing. And like, obviously, like the, the IJC, they're, they're my homies. Like Sarah Khan is like my big sis. <laughs> um, mm. You know what I mean? Like they got mad at me because I was saying like, yo, the judges, y'all must have been smoking some bass rock cavy. Y'all was <laughs> off that 1987 <laughs> fucking freeway rig south central la crack rock shit i don't know what what how y'all made that decision and look that's not against like like uh city towers is my man's and he's fire yeah. but i i don't agree with 
the the methodology they use in the justification for removing those points from Ra. I thought it was some some Mickey ass shit. You feel me? And I also and I also didn't agree with how they did bad news with the with the time limit thing. Like I mm -hmm. thought that was oh, right. Weird. So the you know there's a few times like, there, there there's there's a handful of decisions I disagree with. Not Bro, that but many, that one. but a handful. I think they. But that one, like, I didn't even catch that whole battle. I sat down yeah. in enough time to see you being like, what the fuck? And I was like, whoa, what the fuck? What did I miss? <laughs> like, like, that, that was the first time that I ever noticed you really going in like that. Was the Rosenberg one, yeah. yeah. But, but like, but, 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 like, to be honest with you, like, both of those, um, I definitely, uh, that and the bad news one, I had, like, a clear aversion towards, you know? Mm. And True. through Throughout the season, what were uh, some of the fucking uh, unexpected obstacles that you guys ran into? First time doing it and all. Um, the, you know, to me, like, th there's never an unexpected obstacle. There's a battle rap. You feel me? Like, it, <laughs> what defines unexpected? great? Well, well, what what defines greatness as like as a curator, as a leader in battle rap culture? You have to be ready. I have to be ready at any time to shift, you feel me? The momentum's gonna go this way. It's gonna go that, that way. This for like, so if it's Murphy, that shit, you finna fucking be in for a rude awakening. So it's not about like, you know, you, you can't be bringing a fucking, uh, can't be bringing a, um, uh, what what are the a machete to a to an M16 duel? You feel me? Like you gotta fucking <laughs> you got you gotta have a nuclear submissile made by Krill's relatives for a gunfight. <laughs> you feel me? Like so that shit, I got you. So you, have to, you gotta be OD prepared for that shit. So like that's a so there. There's really nothing like I expected there to be controversial decisions. I expected people to back out. I think the biggest obstacle is the fact that we were able to do this in all these different cities during the motherfucking, you know, pandemic ass Whatever. shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't run, run into more problems with that traveling problems and stuff. Obviously, there was a few battlers that had to pull out due to, uh, due to contacting it, but I was surprised travel restrictions, shit like that. Is that a reason? I mean, I would assume that's the reason there were no Canadians in it at all. Oh, yeah. Just way yeah. too much of a fucking hassle. That's 100 percent the reason. Yeah, that's what I No, that's 100 percent the reason is, the, is the, you know, we would have loved to have. Like uh, we might have to run a Canadian one separate. Thing. Like, what the fuck is <laughs> it wouldn't all be that good this day and age. Chilling. We need, we need to carry so, like, talent out here. Like, obviously, uh, obviously, Sharon, Pat, Pepe, uh, Joey, Joey Gambello, yeah. Chrome. Like, there, there, there's at least like, I can name fucking 10 Canadians, which would have been amazing in this format. So, you know. for sure. Yeah, for sure. It'd be nice if something like that could happen. Season two is a thing that's planned, from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, like, it, you know, if, if, if all goes as planned, there, there will be an S2. But we kind of got to make a decision like, do we want to focus on S2? My man, Krill blowing onion rings over there. We want to, <laughs> do we want to do a, do we want to do S2? Or do we want to like focus on some big events? What, like the blackouts and those yeah, kind of like events? Like a world again? dom, like a blackout. Oh, please like, do. What about yeah. splitting the team and then having that shit rolling and then throwing events on top of that? <laughs> like these are these these, these are all. Uh, I don't know why Krill's not on the staff. Oh, no there's, shit. There's, eh? there's, look, there, there's a lot of different possibilities. Like so, we're like we're we're definitely planning on doing an S two, but it's just like there's the logistics got to line up. So we gonna see how it manifests. But as season one played out, did you uh, hear more from guys who were involved in season one that are saying they want a spot in season two? Of course. Yeah, um, I figured. Of course, everybody want look, bro. Motherfuckers want to leave. Motherfuckers don't want to jump on the train until that bitch left the station. It happens every yeah. single time. Like you know, like. But look, like people dropped out. We got we got replacements. Battles fell through. We did replacement battles. Like I literally at my label's office in Jersey, we threw fucking um, Born versus Jay Murder, uh, Eddie I versus Dre Dennis, Dre Dennis versus Ines. That was all at my label's office. You oh know wow! I mean? like, no, you did, guys literally did definitely roll with the punches with the shit that came at you you definitely ducked it and you fucking came up swinging so it's it's good it stayed afloat and that's the, the result is great i like it 
But I, I mean, the, the uh, first the, the first round of playoffs showed it, right? That it was an absolute beast. Fucking, that was a phenomenal event. That reminded yeah, me of like a fucking solid KOTD event. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, Not see, part of a term or anything. And what's crazy is like um, the way like the West started off so shaky, but then ended so strong. Mm. And then like the East Coast, everybody was like, "This is going to be the most dominant division." Them motherfuckers were all out of here after the, first <laughs> the playoffs. And then there was Lou. <laughs> it's crazy yeah yeah man uh anyone surprised you i'm sure someone must have at least one or two guys from the regular season not thinking you're good they were gonna suck but i mean pull out some uh you know career defining performances thus far i i didn't know how good drake dennis was till i actually like and i've hosted drake dennis battles before granted mm. i was on a lot of cocaine at the time but um, <laughs> but, but like really like you know and and again, I've hosted Bill Collector battles. You know, I was on a lot of ecstasy at the time. But like seeing Bill in this context, the 2022 version of Bill Collector um, is absolutely insane. But, um, you know, seeing how my, my brother passed, who has been one of my best mm-hmm. friends for going on two decades and see like how he's continued to outdo himself like that right there. Like I knew he would be good. I didn't know he'd be as great as he was. Yeah, yeah, and you've got to stand there, fucking, you know, a few feet away from some crazy ass moments. I mean, you know, sitting there from watching at home, you think of like the the pulverized bar with Dunch. Yeah, I was about to say Dunch. Right. Dunch is another guy, like you know, like to see how much growth he's had and where he's at. It's you know, um, it's a shame that that last battle uh went down the way it did, but that definitely doesn't reflect Dunch's skill level of where he's at right now. So yeah, yeah. Know. Yeah, you just had a bad day at the office, and it was just, it sucked too because it. it took a, it took away from, I mean, not to say it took away from Bill Collector's win, but I would think as a competitor, Bill Collector would want Dunch the best Dunch possible, right? That way, there's no questions asked ever. But um, yeah, it, it moments though, like what were some moments? You know, there's there's not a big crowd there, but what were some of the moments that if you were live in the venue like you were and it was a crowd, just would have fucking blew the roof off the place? Like I said, Pulverize is the first one that comes to mind. Or what were some of the other ones? Just with even that small crowd that's in there made fucking more noise than that many people should. No, the thing is this, like, you know, like these battles were designed for a small room. Like a lot of the Mm. things would hit a lot different with a crowd. But like, like, for example, like Bill Collector's Stack Almighty performance would have shaken a large room if you had that. But but the thing is with that, like the fact that there wasn't a big crowd there, he was able to fucking really get through his material in a different way. So it resonates a lot different being in a small room. Like you got to really have like an outside the box perspective on battle rap and like a high battle rap IQ to like, overstand things like that of, of the crowd dynamics of when yeah. you go um you know like you know uh when during the day like you go like if you go later on in the event as opposed to earlier how all these different things affect the overall landscape of the performance mm-hmm. and the way it's perceived mm-hmm. i was surprised too with how well not so much surprised impressed i should say how well Bill Collector adapted to this stage and Rosenberg. I'm not I'm saying not- that I can, like, I didn't think they'd be able to, but and Rosenberg, especially, I like the way, like, Rosenberg was basically the same Rosenberg you always get, but there was a fine tweak in there that allowed him to, to really showcase his material for, you know, what would be considered the KOTD crowd. I, and obviously, I mean, watch it at home because there's not people there. And I found he really did that with the, the Eddie I battle. He really set a tone for that with the bus stop line and all that shit. Um, it was cool. To, I'd like to see some other people cross over that, you know, that we don't necessarily see so much on the KOTD stage where a lot of people, uh, they may think they're not as well received, but they do like, you know, Rosenberg was loved. Bill Collector's kicking the shit out of the shit still in the playoffs. You know, the sure. way I feel about that is like, I totally understand what you're saying and I agree with you. Um, it's like to me though, just even looking at it from that perspective is a double edged sword because, like, I love the preserving the integrity of the quote unquote king of the dot stage and yeah. the history of king of the dot and the benders and the low peshies and the you know, uh, the tricky peas and, and the you know, sketch menaces um, and sketch menace and yeah. jack shit and yeah. aftershock, <laughs> you know, all these unique characters, cheddar cheese, one of my feel favorites. good, like. You know, like 
one of the, like these unique characters, even like dudes that are super slept on, like DDSS, Ellipsis, Pigsty, you feel me? Like mm -hmm. all these dudes that come with the, the um with the style that's distinctly King of the Dot, but outside the box. Like no two of those guys are the same, you know. Yeah. Hollow Hand, I'll throw in a mix with that too, and he's way different than all those dudes. And Completely. it's like so I under like I understand and I appreciate that. But at the same time, I don't like King of the Dot being stigmatized as only having one specific catering to one demographic. Because mm -hmm. really, King of the Dot has always just been celebrating being unique. And mm -hmm. uh, there's so many different rappers that thrive under the King of the Dot um, umbrella. Remember, people forget this is the first umbrella that made Gichi Gotti pop off, that made fucking Rum Nitty, Danny Myers. You feel me? Mm. Like B Dot had a King of the Dot battle before uh, uh, URL uh, Daylight, you know, Grind Time, mm -hmm. King of the Dot. Like, you, so people, I don't like the perspective that people have of like King of the Dot only being like the quote unquote, for lack of a better word, like the, the nerdy, which is a terrible word to describe it because it's not accurate. You feel me? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but 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 just you know using that like frame of reference because king of the dot has always been a lot more than that but at the same time i have an appreciation for the lane and the niche that king of the dot did carve out in, in its early days you know its inception and beyond so like i think that should be celebrated that lineage and those amazing artists that laid the foundation for what's cracking now the arcanes and the skellies and the, you feel me so like people need to you know the uh tycoon taxes people need to give them dudes all the canadian fire ass artists need to get their respect beyond just sharon and pat state who get the universally accepted you know yep. what i mean like the, there's so many of these dudes that deserve their flowers mm -hmm. yeah exactly for years too like you look at the old blackouts and stuff like that you'd get what people would consider smack rappers right just to sum it up easier and then your kotd rappers then you'd also get your fucking dope flop rappers from a whole another fucking continent and they all mix sure. in together right and then you'd be bringing a uh, a fucking the guy from Swollen Members. What's his name? Mad uh, Mad Child. Child. Right? You might yeah. get a mix of like oddball mix in there like that. Sorry, what were you going to say, Lush? Warlords and war orcs. Mad Child. <laughs> fucking <laughs> more orcs and warlords. But, but um, uh, I, I, I think like the proto, shouts to Mad Child, the prototypical to me, like King of the Dot Rapper is someone like a Nestle who like, you know what I mean? Like, an A ward, someone like that who's just super nice with it, a great rapper, and doesn't have like a style that necessarily resonates with a strictly street audience, you know, but still yeah. has components that work in that context, but resonate with another being di diverse is like the benchmark of a king of the dot rapper to me. Mm -hmm, certainly. And that's another term that used to bother me too when people would say, uh, it's a smack rapper as a king of the dot rapper or whatever it may be because so many of them battle on both stages like sure you might say kid twist or sure pat or sharon but other than that it's not like you could label them a kotd or a smack rapper especially for the longest time right i mean smack has contracts now from what i understand so maybe you can't call them smack rappers but well yeah at this yeah. point at this point with like king of the dot having a season and you know URL having contracts like that changes the dynamic a bit. Mm. But you think yeah. you guys that ever have contracts for for this guys for the seasons? I mean, we did have contracts for the guys from the season. I mean that they can't battle elsewhere. No, but restricted, yeah, restricted. Restrictions. Going other platforms. You, you you know like uh, at the end of the day, that decision is really ultimately organics. But you know him and I talk every day several times and. And I, you know, I'm not to speak for him, but I know how I feel about it, and uh, pretty sure he'll echo these sentiments. Like, we don't, we tend to not want to be restrictive of like other yeah. people working and getting a bag and feeding their family. Like, if we have an infrastructure which is allowing rappers to be making six figures and feeding their family like consistently throughout the year, then yes. But until that day, it to me, it don't make sense. Yeah. So you gotta have like a benefit plan, a dental plan, <laughs> dental plan. <laughs> a good paycheck, and then we'll put I you. I mean, on that'd a be dope, contract. though, right? That's like good. that's no, your that, full time ass job. Why not? You feel right. me? Like, absolutely. And now that like you know, there's there's ways to create more residual income for battle rappers. Like 
you know, God willing, that's in the future. You know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to hold my breath, but God willing. If there's a dental plan, sign me the fuck up, bro. I'm trying to fix my mother. Right. Well, <laughs> when you get to that level, though, when you're speaking on it like that, that's like saying like, that would be like saying, well, it's fucked up that the NFL locks people in. Like, no, it's not. Look what they're doing. Yeah, you know, yeah, if you're yeah, at yeah. that level. Yeah, if you're like, you're risking, you're, you're like, you're risking your health for the rest of your life, compromising your body, you know, and like all this other shit. Yeah, like, so the, for, for contact sports, it makes even more sense. But, but I'm saying even, even for Battle Rap, doing, if yeah, you're to that level that where they're getting know, paid that handsomely. Per- right. Absolutely. 401ks, pension plans, all that shit, you know. Like, yeah, so that's, like <laughs> I said, sign me up for the dental plan so I can fix my motherfucking teeth. In Company bitch. car, all oh, that shit. shit. Come on. Man, it's Gas headed, card. It's, it's, it's headed that way because it's been like, look, people are getting, the battlers are getting some real money, right? Like they said, 10 years ago, what was it? 40 racks was a crazy amount. Right. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. Right. Shit. Yeah. Well, I like, think about this, dude. Like rappers, rappers that fu- even ten racks was a crazy. Even ten racks was crazy. But like the thing is, this like all these rappers in the industry are getting paid so much for like looking cool and <laughs> having like minimal skill. Like why the fuck shouldn't rappers that are actually like masters of their craft be getting paid? to that's to a similar pay grade it like Mm -hmm. like it doesn't make sense that would be like if the nba had people that look good in a jersey (laughs) over (laughs) the best athletes right it don't make sense no shit with uh with the playoffs as we're uh getting down to less and less battles every sunday or or every saturday i should say um is there going to be like undercard battles so to speak like you did with the grand prix Yes. And the Grand Prix. Yeah. Yeah. Throw yes. some extras in. Nice. If you'd like, you can announce them all here. Nobody. <laughs> well, I mean, like, like, you know, obviously we got to have real deal defending his, uh, his belt. Oh, what's, I mean, you know, like, what, what's so going gotta, on with that? Is the same real deal happening? Is this ever going to come through? You know, hey, real deal wants that fade. He, he wants to hold down the belt. He's taking all fades. I, I'm, my boy Saint is making a lot of noise right now. He got that Grand Prix thing. He's not really too happy about the way the S1 worked out for him. So you, you, he may need to come outside. Mm. <laughs> is it is it a little harder to sell that too since Saint didn't have such a good showing in S1 and it's been such a long time? Or is it a little harder to, to generate interest for that against Real Deal now as a, as a person who works on the promotion side of it? Hell, hell motherfucking no, and I'll tell you why. I was gonna say, I hell no, and I'll tell you why. If you were, let me ask you a question. If you were 24 or 25 years old and you won $50,000, would you have given a fuck about anything else for the next few months? Fuck no. I would have been fucking drunk and high in a ditch somewhere. All right. So, like, I'm just glad my boy survived. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You feel me? He from Inglewood, bro. It's spunky out there. Yeah, yeah fuck. Bro. I remember when we had Saint on a few times during the Grand Prix. He was just like so confident, right? When I win this shit, when I get that money. But then it would always end with like, I'm getting a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this kid's going to be okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I bro. It. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in fucking in that. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in, you know, like when you're, when you're owed something, you should get it. Right. And he's owed that title shot. He was told he's going to get it. But I also do see how it could be a little harder to sell without him having the best showing through season one. Uh, And also for real deal, too. Right. To start turning it down. But real deal. I don't think he's fucking he'll take on anyone anywhere. Doesn't matter what your stature is. Let's fucking go. That I love so that guy. Set it up he's the, the epitome of a battle rapper. Let's set it up for the finals. Let's have real deal battle for his belt. <laughs> you, you want you want to wait that long? <laughs> Well, no, let's do it tomorrow. Yeah, you're you're fired, Krill. You're off the staff now. Uh, You were doing so good, bro. You almost had had your dental plan. I was just going to say, you didn't even make it the 90 day probation to dental plan. Oh, man. I forgot how long it would be. So you're saying real deal is battling in January is what we're is what we're getting out of here. You know, you, you might see some other you might see some other people that uh you might see some other people you psyched about too. Like there's a so like we're locking in some cool battles to to flesh out those cards where there's you know, you know, we got we only got four 
we got four battles the next time. So after that, we don't need to flesh them out. So mm -hmm. it's about that belt right now, though. You know what I mean? It's the first time somebody's got a belt. Is he's gonna hold on to it? Is he gonna pass it over? That's what I'm on right now. Yeah, no, it's a, uh, and this is gonna unify the Grand Prix belt with the the KOTD Championship belt. So there's a lot of there's a lot at stake. And then whoever wins S1, you know, then they gonna have to run it up for the championship too. So what's happening then? He gets a number. He's next up to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Line up. That's what? it. Well, there's like, that's how it worked, though. There's like, there's the number one contender. There's a list. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, I guess true enough. That's what I was going to see, because the belt kind of turned it more towards a, a martial art kind of thing, right? Because yeah, now you got a boxing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, now, yeah. now it's interesting. It's like, who is he fighting next, right? That's so, yeah. yeah. Second runner that's up. It. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Does the winner of the season, I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. I think the thing they want the most is the 100 grand. But uh, aside from that, do they get a... Uh, like a trophy or anything well, for I wouldn't think they got a belt or be already be announced, but did they get anything on top of that? Trevor D custom jewelry chain or anything, bro. They get, they get a fucking, they get a, a, a fucking uh, blow job from Ava Mendez. Fool. Like, <laughs> nice. Fuck. She got to be like in her fifties now. No. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> You know, obviously, there's going to be a lot of cool, lucrative opportunities for them that come with that. It's not like obviously it don't end there, but you know, shit. I, I hope whoever does it gets to, get, you know, get make some good investments with that shit. If you know, I don't know, you know, whether you want to get into crypto, whether you want to get into NFTs, whether you want to get into, you feel me, starting your your own business like there's that that's life-changing you can get real estate buy a brick you know, that's life-changing money right there <laughs> exactly exactly come on bro buy 17.5 um, 17.5 <laughs> I, I, wanna... I was gonna say um do you want to make any predictions for what's gonna happen on the 15th probably not. um you know i don't want to put that energy out for anybody really like i i have who i think is gonna win 100 like but i don't you know i, I don't want to put that out there just because you know, it, it, when I say my friends are going to win, mm -hmm. I look like a dick rider or like I'm biased. If I say my friends are going to lose, they, you know, I until I can start bottling their tears <laughs> and selling them uh, on eBay, <laughs> it's not really worth it for me to do that. I was worth a shot. I was Bruce. <laughs> Maybe you're going to slip up and give me something. <laughs> <laughs> the old uh, me would have been like, the old me would have been like, Pass is winning. No. <laughs> yeah, fucking, whole thing. It's fucking funny. There is this. Every once in a while, I'll have like an old battle on or something, old KOTD battle, and fucking you'll be running around in the background, and Curl will be like, "Is that fucking lush right there?" I'm like, yep. <laughs> and Curl's just like, "Jesus Christ, he was that bad?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, you had some moments, eh, bro." Oh yeah. I had some moments. <laughs> it's all right, though. It's, it's all about doing better, right? Look at you now, shit. Mm -hmm. And I honestly don't regret any of that shit because, like, that's the way. Like, I, that's what I'm saying, man. That's like a. I had a. I was like literally like out of my body. Like, I wish I could like have been more present for those moments, but they happened the way they were supposed to to me. And they're now like intertwined with my DNA, like on a different way. But if I was sober, I wouldn't have necessarily, they wouldn't have done the same thing to my, to me physiologically. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a give or take. Yeah. Have you ever hosted a battle back when you're getting fucked up and not remembered hosting it the next day? And I don't mean the whole event, but maybe one battle or something. I bet you well, there's events. Multiple times. Hell of a... <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait for the YouTube drop. There's so much shit I don't remember happening. Like I remember, like even like, bro. But I have like I have a scary memory, like how sharp it is, despite my drug use. And there, it, it's all in there somewhere. It's just can I access the data at that right. moment? I might not be able to access it at that moment, but it's in there to the point where like, um, like I. Like like uh, with Dre Dennis, we were doing one of the face offs, and I was like, I never hosted one of your battles. He's like, Yeah, you did. You hosted me in Miami. Like, <laughs> obviously, me in Miami means cocaine. So like, so like, yeah, okay. I hosted a Dre Dennis battle. Apparently, like, mm -hmm. oh fuck. Uh, what about uh, there's something else I was gonna ask you about the uh, having like prelim battles, uh, live performances from what if it's battlers that rap or even rappers or whatever. Is that something you guys have considered? 
live performances at battle events suck. <laughs> really? It didn't work out. I, I would I would be interested in that too. I was just wondering how it it, it that doesn't work well. Do you want to like so Krill, you want to perform at a battle event and be a cigarette break? Yep. Yeah. I guess so. Uh, I guess let me yeah, tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So you know Nakaya who threw mass and all those yeah, events? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that locked Nakaya in for mass, right? Okay. Uh, originally, what Nakaya wanted to do was throw a Wu-Tang Clan concert with rap battles at it, right? Oh Sounds cool God. as fuck, right? <laughs> Sounds cool <laughs> as fuck, right? But here's what would have happened. And I told him, I was like, so you want to throw, like, first of all, you're going to be spending like a couple hundred grand. You understand that, right? Yeah, and yeah. he's like, yeah. I was like, okay, now that we've established that, so you're going to drop like, a hundred bands on Wu Tang Clan. You're gonna drop a hundred bands on battles, and there's gonna be a bunch of Wu Tang fans there. Maybe like ten percent of them will care about battles. There's gonna be a bunch of battle rap fans there. Maybe thirty percent of them care about Wu Tang Clan. Mm -hmm. Those um, when Wu Tang Clan, and this is like the biggest rap group in history. You feel me? Is mm -hmm. performing. A lot of the battle rap fans don't won't even give a fuck. You won't get your money's worth. And when the battles are going on, a bunch of Wu Tang fans that don't give a fuck about battle rap are finna be talking through these battles. Mm -hmm. It's a horrible like when so like performances every single time people use them as cigarette breaks. We've had great MCs rock shows during battles, and it's been like 95% of them are like they don't get done justice. Doesn't so. work right. Um, I was gonna say sorry. I got something to add to this. So maybe Wu Tang and battle rap, yeah. But if the if the performances are more battle rap oriented, what if you have uh, other because big enough battle rappers rap, right? What if you have other battle rappers performing their shit either before or in between too, right? Uh, so we, the so so the battle rap fans that are there to see the battle are actually familiar with the artist that is performing. You know what I mean? So it's more tied in because I, I, what, what I'm looking for is in terms of like a, a more of a show thing, right? So there's some music, there's battles. And now he wants to go work for Triller. I'm just picturing it in my mind. And, and as a person who's done a million battles and million shows, I figured, right, you, 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 something like that must have been tried, right? Where the actual battle rappers rap. In between, before, after, whatever. Well, so here's the thing, um, like, and, and I, we've done it before, you know, I, like, I, I definitely shared that vision with you for a long time. Um, the, the, the thing is this, when you're dealing with something like battle rap, it don't matter if it's fucking, if the performance is a Gichi Gotti or, you know, Ilmac or Sue Surf or somebody like that, like, you know, maybe a handful of heads will pay attention, but not as much as if they were just doing a show. And the reason being this, like the amount of attention and intensity that goes into like from an audience perspective, like the psychic cost that comes with indulging in and in, in absorbing battle rap content is so demanding that like you need a break in between so like i'm all I'm, I'm with you as far as there should be a dj playing music setting the vibe but as far as another performance and me absorbing rap lyrics from like another source it's it it, it tends to be overkill and then, overload like, overload I don't really you. work out i was gonna say like as a fan thinking that through as you guys are describing it i don't want both like I came for one, not the other. And I need, I want to go get a drink or whatever and not miss mm. something that I might like as well, personally. Now something, I agree, Amy. Now something like, uh, you feel me? I'll put that on your cookies one time. Now, now um, <laughs> as far as uh, having one, as far as having one battle at like a show, like a, you know, like a Griselda show or like a Rock Marcy show, something in the vein of like more lyrical hip hop. If you have one battle or like one round or type shit, like sure. that could possibly work, you know, Promo. especially if it's like verbal war zone style over beat, like that might work. But like, it's, you know, to, to me, I agree. Let's keep that shit separated. Mm. That verbal war zone shit's cool. Do you like that? Hello? Okay, bad connection. Oh, I was saying that, that verbal war zone shit, it's cool. I said, do you like it? Oh, verbal war zone is fire. I love it. Oh, hey. Yeah, I Absolutely. really, really like it. That And it's such a, like, 
in obviously you know you've seen how fucking hundreds of fucking battles over beats but usually the beats coming out of the speaker and the fucking rapper's got a mic and they're trying to yell over the beat i love how they have the headsets on and everything sounds right i, I really like the production value of it uh no, that's I, my, my boy shots to my boy nova uh, who, who runs the whole uh visual audio element of verbal war zone he does an incredible job yeah. And yeah, you mentioned Nakaya before. Where did Nakaya come from? You know, guys like you direct. I saw you guys, you know, coming up from fucking grind time, maybe even heard your name or read about you on the Internet even before grind time. But it seemed like he just popped up out of nowhere. He started going. He started buying VIP tickets to shows, flying to Oakland, flying to Toronto, doing all this shit. And he reached out to me and we started chopping it up. And the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Eh? That's crazy. He was he was reaching out to to myself, King Fly, at like a few different people aspect, and and then me and him wound up working shit out. You feel me? Okay. And what's a vetting process like that? Because I assume, or maybe you do. If anyone comes at you with enough money to throw an event, you'll work with them, or is it absolutely like, not? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So, what's the vetting process like? Like a lot of it comes down to just like being. First of all, I got to see that you actually have the paper you're talking about. You know, I don't know. Mm. You maybe got to open an escrow account or something like that. You feel me? Mm. So I see because I'm not going to be having conversations with artists or bringing you to King of the Dot or doing anything of that nature. If I don't see that, like the money's really there and like, you know, you're going to have to show and proof. And then at that point. I got to get a glimpse into your character. So what? What are your intentions? Why are you coming to the culture? Is this just a money grab for you? Because if that's the case, I'm going to tell you to stroll on, boy. But mm -hmm. if you really are about this and uh, want to grow and build positively for the culture and have your head and your heart in the right place and the right intentions, then we can talk further. But now we've learned the hard way by letting too many interlopers in. We ain't with that no more. Mm -hmm. They got to, you know, the, then Mr. Bob Davalina ass motherfuckers got to go <laughs> that way. <laughs> How much, how much, how much is it to throw an event, <coughs> to throw a decent size event with decent rappers or much, well, what's a ballpark? Is it a hundred grand? Is it less? Is it more? Depends on what size of card you want to do. You feel me? Like, like I could put together a fire ass card of like, of hungry up and comers for 10 bands or less. You feel me? Like, but if you want to get like them big dogs involved, then, you know, a lot of them are going to even well, come yeah, outside we're talking from less than that. Six figures each, right? And yeah, fuck. Mm. You know what so I mean? You gotta, like, you gotta be cuffing up a mill if you want to do a fucking big. If you, if I just come up to you and I say I got some money, I want to put up a fucking real event, <laughs> right? You, we're looking at a mill. No, what like uh, I definitely like you're, you're gonna lose it. Put it. You gonna, you gonna well, lose it. About you winning or losing? Event, I, I, like, like you could. If I'd had the money like that, right, I'd just throw one for the fuck of it just to say I did it, but I'd want it to be nice, right? So I'm just thinking that would be probably a million bucks. If if you if you want to put up like, you know, 200, 300 grand, you can get a fire ass card out of it for show. Yeah. That'll shake up the whole culture if it's handled by the right person. If you put that budget in my hands, in organics hands and, you know, ARP's hands, like someone like that, we can make it happen for you. So 300 is, or you know what I mean? Like, as soon as I get that contract or the lotto, we're on. <laughs> the lotto. Oh, quit playing. You know, like, like I said, direct poison pen. There's like, you know, Norbs, there's a handful of people that could do that justice. Like, you know, and that's it. Yeah. Obviously smack, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And what's, is Shoddy still running that premier league out in, in England? Premier league's doing the damn thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember when it first came, like at first there was, you know, rumblings of it. And then I was paying attention to it for a bit. And it, I don't know if it's just I haven't noticed it or if it hasn't been as active. Probably through the pandemic, it makes it a little more difficult. But uh, I had high hopes for that because they got a fucking shitload of talent over there. They always have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Premier League is fire. I love the UK. I've function with the uk very heavy so you know it's dope to have them on our twitch platform and rocking with them like they cool as hell i love uh you know um, briggs and shots and all them fools are the homies mm -hmm. so you got you got s1 going on now you're in the s1 playoffs you're working with sue surf for what he's got going on midnight mattis you're putting a team in there then you'll have s2 coming up where do you do music in the 25th hour of the day if you if you notice, I put out five videos last month. Yeah, you so feel me? Like I got how? my freestyle. <laughs> I got my freestyle with Ilmac. Uh, that 
that came out by above uh, one above freestyle. I put yep. out um, my joint uh, Sean White with Frack and um, Ilmac and Chase and Fredo and Non Fierro. I got um, another single I put out called um, Saint Ides. I got um, I got another uh, joint I featured on a, a video with my boys uh, Baby Franco and Zoo Deville. We got a video called Hmm. I did another video with a. Uh, with Chase Moore, Eddie I, and Fredo um, called Fizz Nation. And I got another joint with my partner, Young DC, called Duce. And all those dropped in a two month period. Oh, so, and like, you got and another got my, one. Another album dropping. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I got Horatio Ski Resort dropping very soon. And then um, I got um, my joint with Krill came out recently as well. And I got. Um, and I got a project with my boy Body Bag Ben. We're halfway through, so I stay like the last time. I had big opportunities, like with the the whole Alki, you know, uh, Diz Cassidy situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of put all my music on the back burner. Like I, I, I'm never doing that again. Music is always gonna be like th- that's my like for my mental health. If I don't, rec- that's what I'm saying chord and I don't get that out like I feel like that could lead to me like relapsing you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. I need to do and I know that sounds dramatic but like music is always going to be a priority for me so I find I find time to do that I write bars in my motherfuckers it is and I'm always be writing bars and creating content and uh you know and curating hip-hop culture that's what I live for it but the music is an essential piece Mm. and it's you said you know you could you're right you know writing you could write wherever you are but as far as recording, do you have like a central place you're doing most of your recording or I'm pretty sure you can find a spot, whatever city you're in. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and you know, like in Detroit, I have a spot, me and Mac Myron are about to do a whole project. Do you feel me? Oh, shit. Um, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, uh, I have a spot in Philly called milk boy, which is a crazy dope studio that, you know, my fiance and her brother, John fuck with. So like I'm situated out there. And then in LA, I got my boy Chase Moore and my boy uh, Jordan River. I record with them. And that's like, like I told y'all before, I keep it in a house. I don't really like, I don't give a fuck about working with, when I work with names, it's mm. like because it's an organic thing and we respect each other. Like if I'm doing a joint with Dell or I'm doing a joint with RJ Payne, it's because we fuck with each other in real life. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like people like you might see people on my records that don't even you don't even know them as rappers because we used to sell dope together. Like mm-hmm. it's all organic relationships. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. on some street shit, on some hip hop shit. So like and, uh, you know, like you said, like writing, like I write on fucking planes. I'll write when um, I'm watching TV with my girl when you know. You know what I mean? I'll write on the way to the studio. Like, like it's going to get done. Like, like that's it. And it's like, at this point, like emceeing, like I'm better, I'm sharper than I ever was. And it's because it ain't on me, it in me. And now that I'm sober, it's just like this infinite reservoir of experience, like a myriad of experiences to experiment with. You feel me? Like, so it's all like right there. Like, I, I could just pull from everything that I went through in my life and just put that in. It's like, I don't have to think about it. And the art of creative speech is so intrinsic to my being when I'm doing something like hosting an event when i'm doing interviews like it's all right there it's the same it's the same um cerebral place that i'm drawing from so I, it, it, they all like all these different things sharpen each other you know hmm. so if the record record label comes to you record company comes to you and says that they want you to be part of a, a fucking massive tour it's going to take up 10 months of the year uh would you pick that and step away from s1 and doing hosting just depends on what the financial situation is like. Like mm-hmm. back in the day, I would have jumped at something like that. But like, you know, I have a fucking fiance. I have a, I have a, you know, I have like, if the fight, like if this is getting me more money than what I'm doing elsewhere, I'm gonna have to do it. And, and I'll do it happily because I love performing and go but like you know it would have to be the right situation i can't just jump on before i wouldn't have even given a fuck as long as i had money to eat and some drugs i would have done it you know what I mean? like, but what like, about what about your beat selection in the music because with the last project when we spoke last uh when we spoke last about your project you were going with the la noir sound and all that are you still trying to pursue that that's always going to be a part of my shit. You like, like, that's like my genre. Like I could do, I do other shit. Like I'm doing some more like, like 
but when I do it, I'm gonna bring that aesthetic to it in some way, shape, or form. It's like so, like I'm doing like Detroit type shit with Mac. I'm doing fucking um more, you know, like uh, G funk oriented like gangster shit as well. But I'm like combining the like I'm always gonna have like boom bap is in my soul. Like L A Noir is my sound, and that's never gonna change. Nice, nice. It's audio cinema. Audio cinema, nice. <laughs> <coughs> all right you guys got anything else for lush before we let him get out of here no we're good man i'm just getting ready for this anime video or whatever we're gonna work out and then we're gonna push for that so let's go okay. crazy krill let's go crazy i'm okay, curious let's... have you been back to texas as you were traveling this last year i went to texas once my old treatment center had me uh go out there and speak to all the kids there and fuck the kids they're like grown-ass men but <laughs> like so like every week i do um via zoom I, I speak on a panel at a treatment center in texas but i actually went to my old treatment center and spoke to them and did a commercial they feel like so they like flew me out put me in a hotel shouts to brc recovery it's so funny that it's called that because battle rap culture brc but you know it's, uh, it's called bringing that that's just like that's like a kismet right there that's serendipity no shit, eh? but called brc uh bringing real change um recovery in manor texas shouts to um the, the mother of my sobriety uh marcia stone and uh, her husband jonathan stone they're, they're they're like my sober mom and dad they like you feel me uh they own that place and they like so they wound up bringing me back and to to talk to kids and, or to talk to kids talk to the talk to all the residents there <laughs> and um and yeah, that's but that's the only time, and it was it was awesome. I got to see my brother, and uh, my brother lives in Austin, and my nieces and uh, sister in law. Uh, so that was lit. All right, Lush. So before you leave us, this is the most important question. Mm, well, There's a giant Betty White memorial service, and you have to intro Betty White to start her eulogy. Oh, How does oh, it go? Oh, oh. Mm. I love it already. You feel me? You feel me? Like, um, there's only one thing in the world that can get me right. It's two bad bitches and an ounce of that Betty White. Come on. Can I get a <laughs> ooh, no? I love you. All right. Love you too. Amazing. Hey, just RIP to Betty White. The fact that she's from that era where, where you know white people was hella racist and kept mm -hmm. it thorough the whole time, bro. She deserves you feel me. She one of the real ones. I fucks with her. That's nice. Rest Facts. in peace. All right, Lush. Let everyone know, you know, where to find you. What else you got coming up? Anything you want to plug? The floor is yours, my man. Man, like they they say I should plug my hair, but I ain't with that. You feel me? <laughs> I'm gonna just keep it bald in this motherfucker. I'm gonna keep it, you know. I'm I'm just gonna bick it. Your bitch gonna still let me stick it. But uh with that being said, you feel me? It's West Side 5150 Crooks 5700 Black Club. Clemson, shout out to my little brother Smokey, you feel me? Free my brother North, free my brother Lil C, free my brother Rodney, you feel me? Uh, no, that no. part, you feel me? Do this for the motherfucking avenues and all that shit for them blocks. Y'all know what it is. West LA shit till I motherfucking die. Till caskets, baby. Y'all know what it is. Uno, baby. Come on. Perfect. All right, bro. For Lush One, Amy Barton, Krill Kasatsky. I'm Jay Kelly. This is Phil Downtown. We out. Peace. Easy. We out this biatch out this biatch. <laughs> nice lush man i really nice appreciate coming you coming through, through. Uh, i always appreciate your time very 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 much and i can't wait to talk to you again my man yeah whenever you that get a fire break, whenever you get a break from your busy schedule please send me that lyric bro i'm working on the next you, thing and that's you'll have that tomorrow that's on me awesome yeah. my g thanks a lot wait all right thanks lush happy new year bye. have a good all night right, happy man. new year much love y'all go on. later Peace out. Bye. Building downtown, building downtown, building downtown.